Run Forest Run for the Porsche Macan T, a new unique model in the Macan lineup. Porsche wants to put a four-cylinder Macan model in a sporty, unique direction. Does that work? Four-cylinder to be a more, yeah, one of the most unique models. But maybe it does. It worked for the Boxster T so far, for example, for the 780 models. And here now, the Macan T gets gray accentuations right here. It's a special, unique color. This review also about the facelift of the Macan. First time we have the four-cylinder facelift here. So all the details you need to know about that. Papaya is the color for today. New graphic element here, also with this kind of three-dimensional stamping in the front. So a very interesting approach already visually wise. And the four-cylinder is a little bit lighter on the front axle. Well, we'll try out. Here is Thomas and Autogruppe. We we'll drive up the Col de Torini. This is kind of like the king's stage on the Rally Monte Carlo. And we'll find out how agile this Macan T is. 4,73 meters or 186 inches is the length of the Macan. And you can see here the Macan T gets new interesting accentuations. It starts with 20 inch wheels. We can also see them here. The reason they don't look so large is this vehicle here is still equipped with winter tires. Optional, you can even get 21 inch wheels and again, again with summer tires it looks even bigger than. And also great contrast here for the side mirrors and also in the lower area right here with the papaya color here today. It's a very interesting orange like color. It has a very unique combination however if you pick a bright color like a white for example these contrasts will of course appear even stronger maybe than the typical Porsche styling here towards the hip area. Suspension wise, this one here comes with a sporty uh, suspension, the PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management, minus 50 millimeters, but you can also optionally on that get the air suspension, which is then even 10 millimeters lower. So on the one hand, maybe more comfort with the air suspension. On the other hand, with the even sportier setup, these two choices you have. Top speed, by the way, 230 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour. So even though it's four cylinder, goes really fast. Have you seen here the white brake calipers? They not only add a very interesting contrast, especially here to the gray alloys, they also indicate a special brake because these here are the optional PSCB, Porsche surface coated brakes, tungsten carbide surface that reduces brake dust. So it's even basically environmentally better and also better braking performance. Unlike the PCCB, that's the Porsche ceramic composite brake, the even more expensive ceramic brakes also available for the Macan. And huge price difference, ceramic brakes towards 10,000 euros or dollars, this year around 3,000, 3,500. In the rear, the facelift recently introduced this new light signature and still goes all the way through. Really impressive, super clean look as well. Macan T logo and the T also adds these gray elements here as a contrast in the top part, for example. And the lower part also gets a new look here with this, yeah, it's kind of like a three dimensional stamped in and although it's only the four cylinder well <laughs> it's like one pipe per, per cylinder and these are the real thing always spectacular how the hood opens and how the lamps are cut out here really cool <laughs> and here we go this is a two liter four cylinder engine 265 horsepower 6.2 seconds in the acceleration figure unlike the 2.9 liter six cylinder then for the macan s and gts but the strange thing is here, hmm, okay, why didn't they boost the power a little bit for the Macan T version? Because it's the same power figure than the normal Macan four cylinder. I would have expected some 300 horsepower here, like in a, you know, like in a Leon or in a just VW Golf R or something. They could have boosted the horsepower. I think it would have been a clever choice to differentiate the T model a little bit more. However, one advantage here for the four cylinder towards the six cylinder. This one here, 60 kilograms less of weight on the front axle. That could have a good effect on the driving agility. And some other color choices for you. This one here is Gentian Blue, Enzian Blau in German. Yeah, pretty nice Thomas Blue color, isn't it? Or what about the pure white vehicle here, where once again you see these gray contrasts a little bit stronger. This one, by the way, here, the standard white without any extra price. This is the car key with a typical Porsche form, nicely done, really light. You can get keyless entry. This car, however, does not have it. Then, door closing sound is actually quite 
good, not excellent, not bad at all. Then here inside of the doors is rather hard on top. It's not entirely hard, but almost hard. Here's a little bit softer for your elbow, but also this is quite stiff, so it should be a little bit plusher, I think, actually. Then we also have the Bose sound system here. This is a nice option for music lovers. Then the Macanti has these special entry badges, kind of like you know, dark um, brushed style with the T. Maybe Macan T, Macan Thomas, I don't know. <laughs> then you can also get the Racetech steering wheel. You know the microfiber is called Racetech now since a while for Porsche. It's of course the way to go. I just love it. Great grip both in summer and winter time. That's really lovely. And it still can be combined with that heated steering wheel function that is here behind, you know, hidden behind here. And then the seats, sport seats with more shoulder support and in the Macan T with fabric inserts. Also here with these contrast stripes. Looks really cool. However, the outside, this is still animal skin. Kind of unnecessary that they did that. But let's check out the comfort. Oh, it's a nice vintage car sound. Oh, look at that beamer there. Look at that. You see it? You see it? Wow. That's cool. Wow. I think there's a feature of that on Auto Gefühl about, um, you know, this is the car that Elvis owned, actually. Have you seen that? Wow, that's awesome. So I, I will link the video um, to, the, to the Elvis uh, car special. And now back to our Macanti. So the seating position here, since you have more shoulder support, it has good comfort indeed because it takes off weight from your lumbar area. So, uh, and also the fabric insert here is really superior to the full animal skin setup because this one here stays breathable in summertime and it's also not cold in winter. So in this case then really good. The key is still put here in the left part, classic, and then you also really turn it around for the ignition and so on. Steering wheel here with the manual control up and down, in and out, and we also have these classic Porsche gauges where the RPM meter is analog and the central of the whole thing. Only on the right side you have a screen then. You can, for example, also have a map display in there. And I think that's actually a good mix of digital and analog. Interior overview always with this wrapped tight look horizontal stress, new infotainment system soon deals to that. Then also big shifting lever here with microfiber, also newly designed middle console and that race tech steering wheel, really cool. Left side for the volume control, right side for the instrument control and always to have the drive mode selector on the steering wheel. That's a good thing to have. So easily changing the driving modes than while driving and the sports chrono clock. Well, and if you really closely monitor the time in different shots, that will maybe discover that we don't always shoot everything in the chronological order. Maybe someone took a look at it. Infotainment system, 10.9 inch for the Macan facelift now. The car internal GPS looks like this. Not that responsive, of course. It is usable. We're here near the Nice area today beautiful in the southern France area. So the thing is, you can use this infotainment system, but most of the time probably we will also use Apple CarPlay, not Android Auto, because Apple CarPlay is the only thing that works here. You see here the integration that is actually quite slim, it's not full screen. Android Auto, by the way, available for Taycan, Panamera and Cayenne in the most recent iterations then. And the sound system here, the Bose sound system is actually yeah, quite cool. So nice sound to be recommended. Besides touch, by the way, you can also use a knob to navigate in the CarPlay. And this is here on the right side. So this would be like a, uh, yeah, like an MMI, MMI controller uh, here. And when you are in the car internal map, then this is actually for the zoom. It's actually quite cool. I like still to have these real physical buttons and here on the left side then for the volume. Some decluttering for the facelift here, but we still have this metal knurled control center for the climate. This is actually quite decent. But then here, these capacitive buttons here, also for example, for suspension, you can see here, my fingers are not especially greasy, but this is a surface where you can like see fingerprints all over the place indeed. Cup holders, adaptive, that's good. And then here, that's how you attach an armrest. This is really, uh, you cannot shake it at all good perceived quality. Then here, USB-C chargers, one and two. 
and inductive charging would be putting your smartphone here and then face the screen to the outside, not the most practical solution. Rear seating area, you also have the sporty fabric inserts with the stripes, that's actually quite cool. You do see you have a large middle tunnel, now with a facelift also two USB-C chargers. And then let's take a look, what about the legroom? Well, I have the seat as I would be driving and that gets very close. It does fit for four tall adults, but it gets really close. So legroom is not the specialty of the Macan. We also have this vehicle here, with the very nice race tax ceiling here. That's actually cool. And some headroom left. There's also an optional panoramic roof available. Seating comfort in the rear is actually quite decent. So um, it's actually good. I mean, the, the bolstering is stiff, but still, you know, it's very comfortable indeed. As for adjustment of the seat, there's nothing to be done here besides then, you know, folding it here. Um, there are also no you know, different you know, angles or something available. Here in the middle part, you can fold that one down for adaptive cup holders. Once again, nice build quality. You can also use this one here as a ski edge. And then, well, in that middle console here, well, sitting on the middle part is kind of tough that will get close with, you know, with the legs and so on, but it is theoretically possible also for five tall adults. But then again, yeah, big middle tunnel and so on. Always a highlight to open the Macan trunk here from the outside with this button right there. It's just a nice idea, I think. And then the length of that trunk is a little bit less than a meter of 40 inches. The width is exactly a meter of 40 inches and the height to the cover is about 50 centimeters or almost 20 inches. You see here the backpack also fits in easily and you can fold the seats one third, two thirds split or with that ski hatch and the total length then is one meters 70 plus or 67 inches plus. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge and we're pulled here to the sports plus mode and going up the Col de Torini. So this is the most favorite or most famous stage of the Rally Monte Carlo. Tour de France was also here, so a little bit slower of course, but here we use it today for the Macan T. See if that falls in the even got it although it's just four cylinders, but we have less weight on the front axle and they also changed the suspension setup here, stiffer suspension. In this case, we have the air suspension, which is even a little bit lower, even more in the sports mode. So it goes even lower then. And also the all-wheel drive distribution, it already has a rear wheel bias, but here in the Mark T, it is even more rear wheel bias. I can also see it here in the distribution that I have always more power on the rear wheels and that definitely helps us to get out of the corners. And here, going uphill, of course, that's a special thing to check then with the corners. Great steering, super direct. A little bit screaming of the tires here. Wow, that feels so nicely. Such a great handling of that SUV. I don't even feel we're like boosted up in any way or something. Really feels like a low sitting sports car. Race tech steering wheel with the microfiber surface here. That is awesome. Wow, this has such a balanced handling. So from the pure handling and you know, the weight distribution front rear and wow, I mean, it is air suspension here in this case. So you do have comfort also over some bumps. At the same time, it's actually, yeah, I mean, it, it's sporty and comfortable at the same time. So this is also a good thing then here with that optional air suspension. The PASM will also do fine, of course, but here you have more possibilities to make it more comfortable in the comfort mode and sportier than in the sports mode. And wow, this is so much fun. This goes up the hill so smooth, really nice. Of course here, you hear the engine is working. We only have the four cylinder power. Again, it's good for the handling and for the weight. But when I want to be really on the gas, sometimes I think, yeah, maybe the power from the single cylinder could do a little bit better to be a little bit more spontaneous. Yeah, but I mean, it is good performance, no doubt about that. Sound, of course, is something we are missing. So you might have think, ah, maybe they could have done some sound emulation or something. That would have been something. Sport Plus mode, by the way, also the stability control is being drawn back, so I can play a little bit more around with that vehicle. Wow, I'm having so much fun going up here, these windy corners. Wow, what a landscape here now. We're getting 
higher and higher. The peak will be soon at 1,600 meters, that's about 5,200 feet. So quite a bit of elevation here, air gets thinner, that also has a toll on the engine performance, of course, you know that. So the thinner the air, the higher that it goes up. It's always a thing, you know, like in, in racing, of course, when you're racing in high altitude. And yeah, I mean, a lot of legends have gone up this hill. Walter Roll, of course, Colin McRae, Sebastian Loeb, Sebastian Ogier, and so on. And I mean, it's crazy. I all already feel that we would be going really fast here, but they are actually going up the hill like you know double or triple the speed at least and that's absolutely crazy how narrow that is here yeah come on that performance in here from that engine wow and still I mean suspension is so well thought out I don't feel it's a bad choice to make it a little bit stiffy in this case sometimes the stiff sport suspensions are just annoying because they're too stiff here in the sports mode especially of course it is stiffer than even than in a normal mode but you can still do so much things with that vehicle. A little bit of the tire screen. Ah, now nicely done. More rear drive than from the front, and that really pushes me out of the corners. That is so cool. <sighs> lovely, just absolutely lovely. Little bit of sliding around in the rear, so that is even possible with that four cylinder. So, from the driving agility. You do not miss these two cylinders at all. It's such an awesome vehicle. So if you want to save some money, stick with the four cylinder. Maybe taxation in your country is bad for the six cylinders or something. The Macan T is an excellent opportunity to spice up your four cylinder life here for the Macan. That's, I think, a great sweet spot. Here in these situations, you know, when we were like, braked in, you know, by some really narrow corners, then that six-cylinder performance could help me a little bit more to get it up to the RPMs, that definitely, and of course, the sound is better with the six-cylinders. So these are the two things you have to bear in mind, but other than that, I mean, this is easily the best sporty SUV in this segment, and I would say really by far, I mean, um, currently at home I have a BMW X3 M40i, which is an awesome vehicle, no doubt. And of course also with that six cylinder, but from the pure driving energy, agility, how we can put this around in the corners. Seats are holding us tight as well, good shoulder support, and of course more breathable with these fabric inserts here. And the combination, you know, like seating, steering wheel here, the size and the directness, how smooth it feels, and I have such a great... Um, connection, driver, vehicle, and road. Yeah, I mean, this is really as good as it gets for an SUV. If you might compare it to the Cayenne, for example, for, you know, to the bigger brother, this one here, of course, sportier just because of the weight, of the size, and so on. So the Macan is definitely more fun to steer around, especially here in these narrow corners. And this is here also pure auto fuel. Look at that here now, S corners, lovely. And you might see the pictures on TV and it's always something completely different when you're in that yourself. Oh, this is so awesome. Woo! <laughs> what else we can do? We can um, you go to the you know, EC Sport, PSM Sport, or yeah, in that case, PSM Sport. Um, there's, by the way, when I press and hold it, let's see, we can also completely turn it off. That's not recommended for public roads, so I also want to be responsible here. PSM Sport is kind of enough, and that actually draws back the stability control even more. And you should only use it when you really know the vehicle very well and you know what you're doing, actually. So, and of course, you have to be even more careful, but in this case, then, um, the effect that I'm being you know, like drawn back by the brakes or something in the corners is a little bit reduced. However, here on dry road conditions, um, doesn't make the biggest difference than here since this car is very balanced anyway. And also that Sport Plus mode already takes back the stability control or these electronic helpers. Wow, I'm really impressed. So when they said they want to make a four-cylinder Macan unique, definitely made that with that little exceptions here uh, but well, fun wise driving wise I mean 
just for the pure driving agility, you know, and the weight distribution, is that even better with the six cylinder uh, than than the six cylinder? That might even be the case. So I mean, 60 kilograms might not be like 120 pounds on the front axle less. It doesn't sound too much actually but when you're in the more extreme conditions here more on these running corners that can actually be a, some kind of a difference and once again i'm having so much fun here and i can't remember you know that i ever had so much fun in an suv in so tight corners suvs can be sport we know that they are special sports version by almost all manufacturers by the way and we have driven them on racetracks and also on sporty roads, but this is here, it's really, really narrow. I'm not sure if it's really transparent on camera. You can also see like uh, some of the stuff there in the infotainment system. But that an SUV is fun in so tight corners, it has to be really good from the setup. Yeah, of course, and here now EC Sport doesn't make a big difference because I have to be careful, you know, that I'm not too hard on the throttle. And the difference with the EC Sport would be rather than really when you push the throttle even further. Wow. That guy, respect man. I mean, <laughs> it's already tough to go up here by car. Yeah, that's a safe spot. Yeah, and even that, you know, still got some power reserves from that four cylinder. Really nice. Wow, one, one more time, heads off guys. We're getting higher and higher and higher, and does the engine feel, you know, somehow weaker now? Maybe a little. Wow. What do you say, Michel, as co-driver today? Co-driver is very important in rally racing, you know. So you haven't you haven't given me any directions though, you know. Like usually, like, like two left line and one right, and don't cut. Well, three left, three right. I guess this makes you the biggest legend who's ever driven on this track before. So. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who, who was it? Was it was it also Colin McRae? Who like, you know, um, at one time said like, ah, oh, you know, to be honest, I never listened to my co-driver ever. <laughs> All the co-drivers in the scene were freaking out. Like, how can he say that? <laughs> no, of course, the co-drivers are really important. So Even... similar to you, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe Colin, Gray, Colin McRae uh, and I are maybe like, you know, I don't know. Brothers at, the brothers at heart, I don't know, and yeah, totally sad story what happened to him, and yeah, God bless him, and uh, we really wish he would be still racing out there. By the way, if you drive this car slowly, cruise control motorway, you can score some nine liters on one kilometers, like 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK. <laughs> Sorry, I have to concentrate on driving as well, not only on a few economy figures, and here, um, you know, when we're driving up the hill here, then rather some 14, 15 liters on one kilometers, of course, and way less than 20 mpg, both US and UK. So, and this is now, you know, some part where we drive kind of like through the forest, also some different scenery, a little bit faster, and the final stages will then be, once again, a little bit tighter. So here yeah, also really cool how the air suspension helps us like also when there's some rollers or something that is awesome and that steering it really feels like it would be transported over from the 718 models you know and that's why just driving wise my favorite Porsche models are really the Macan and the 718 Boxster because they drive so well balanced and the other ones just feel bigger the Cayenne will do some better long-term comfort and so on but if you really, really want some more purist driving fun yeah and that's also where the T models T stands for touring by the way not for Thomas <laughs> so there where the Porsche T models are really um, you know positioned for that touring aspect so just like here you know you have, are on a nice tour but you also want to drive it in a very sporty way and rather reduce it to the max be a little bit more purist and the Boxer T or the Cayman T is to me the more essential part of Porsche, uh, not going always for the highest horsepower figure and for the biggest spec and so on. The PCCB, the ceramic brakes, are not available anymore for the Macan, by the way. Just um, mentioned the price difference earlier, just for you know, curiosity. And now the corners get tighter once again, and 
we are so lucky that we have no one in front of us and not so many cyclists here today because that can happen so really a unique chance to drive up this road in such nice weather with such a clear track and it's so great that you actually joined us for that and enjoy this one here on tape as much as we do look also how the steering ratio really fits to that road so when I'm in a 90 degree turn I also turn the steering 90 degrees that's really awesome I love that really nice progressive smooth everything is in one flow and that is something you know I usually only you know maybe achieve in mountain biking or something or downhill mountain biking what I also do you have you know what I really feel at this moment is this so-called flow and when you have like a favorite hobby or something you might know what I'm talking about you are in the moment you're not thinking of anything else all the problems you might have in this world are just gone and you are in this flow you are just in the moment you're steering the vehicle you're handling throttle steering well clutch <laughs> and uh, shifting is done by the vehicle however I can also do it myself here with the shifting pedals that might also be some fun idea and then maybe we can keep it for example the gear lower the sports mode is already keeping the gears lower definitely but here with the sh uh, shifting myself I can do that as well and keeping the RPMs even a little bit higher that bring, brings me more agility and here when we have a little bit more open road then also the ESC sport mode has a bigger effect the surface here is a little bit tougher now you might also hear some no, rattling from the interior now because of our camera equipment because so much rattling forces are then applied here now also the road gets a little bit you know um, slippery because of the you know some very small loose stones on there have to be careful for that always be ready wow and we are getting closer and closer towards the peak second gear third maybe even fourth going back yeah it's also so much fun to use the shifting pedals the small but really precise give you a nice feedback oh my god I mean on camera things look always slower than they really are because you do not feel the g-forces and the camera angles are also sometimes deceiving but I'm telling you we were really really fast here so far now it opens up this has been yeah, probably one of the coolest things here we've ever done in a sporty SUV. What a journey, what an experience. If you like our Macan content, we also have, for example, the Macan S facelift and also the GTS facelift if you want to go it max out.